Why do some cleaners only kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria? What happens to the 0.01%? The same principle of imperfection can be applied to what we are going to talk about today. Bacteria-fighting drugs, known as antibiotics, help to kill the bacteria that make us feel sick. Unfortunately, today we are finding that the way we use antibiotics is creating a bigger problem, superbugs. Superbugs are bacteria that have gained resistance to several antibiotics. When using an antibiotic, a large portion of the susceptible bacteria gets killed, but a small number don't, aka the 0.01%. Over time, these bacteria divide and carry on their antibiotic-resistant genes. This results in the antibiotic not being effective over time. One common superbug seen both inside and outside the hospital is the methicillin-resistant Streptococcus aurorus, MRSA. The bacteria is a leading cause of skin and soft tissue infection, such as abscess and cellulitis. Talking to us today is a physician from the Hamilton General Hospital, an Associate Chair of Education in Pathology and Molecular Medicine at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. So my name is Cheryl Main. I'm a medical microbiologist and infectious disease doctor. I work out of the Hamilton General Hospital. I'm also um, an educator, so I'm the Associate Chair of Education um, for the Department of Pathology and Molecular Medicine at McMaster. So I spend part of my time doing research and part of my time doing education, and the rest of my time doing lab work and patient care. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, is a form of Staphylococcus aureus that has become resistant. And methicillin is actually not a drug we use in people, it's one that we use traditionally in the lab. Um, and so Staphylococcus aureus is a really common bacteria. Um, a good percentage of the population carry it on their skin and in their nose. It likes areas like your armpits and your groin. And it is a really common cause of skin and soft tissue infection like cellulitis. Um, it can also cause more aggressive infections, bloodstream infections, heart infections, endocarditis, um, and basically any body system can get infected with the bug. So the garden variety Staphylococcus aureus causes big problems on its own, but it has a number of drugs which will treat it. When it develops methicillin resistance, then the number of drugs we can use to treat it goes down significantly. And so we have very limited treatment options. So we ended up having to use drugs like vancomycin, which are toxic to kidneys, or new drugs which are very expensive like linezolid or daptomycin. And so these patients end up having to be on expensive drugs which are hard to get with lots of monitoring. And if we underdose those drugs or we don't treat them appropriately, we don't get rid of the source of the infection, the bug can become even more resistant. And we all live in fear of a bug called vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which has developed resistance to our first line drug, which is vancomycin. Bacteria become superbugs in a, a number of ways, so some, it depends on the drug that you become resistant to. So most of the superbugs have acquired resistance genes from other bugs, and so those can be on a plasmid um, or exchanged sexually with other bacteria. Um, they exchange genetic information. Some bugs um, develop uh, enzymes to break down. The antibiotic, so the beta-lactamases are a good example of that some bugs will prevent the antibiotic from getting into them so they change the they lock the door that the antibiotic normally gets in and so therefore it's not effective anymore um, and some just um, for example vancomycin intermediate staphylococcus aureus it just the vancomycin acts on the cell wall so the bug creates a thicker cell wall so there's more target so the drug is less effective so i always um, describe bacteria as being intelligent they're not they don't really have brains but they figure a way around whatever antibiotic we put to them they will adapt to try to survive and often they'll give up their own genetic fitness to um, gain more resistance and to avoid being killed by the antibiotics that's in the environment so the ways to prevent um, resistance are to avoid using antibiotics unnecessarily and um, be very judicious with how how we use them and when we use them that's by far and away the best way MRSA is important in the hospital um, because it is pretty common and it's easily transmitted on the hands of healthcare providers. So the nurse who um, 
takes care of the patient, you know, moves them in their bed, can get MRSA on their hands, and then spread it to the next patient. And once you get colonized with it, once it's hanging out on your skin, it's really hard to get rid of it. So some of the research I've done has looked at ways to get rid of that bug. Um, so patients who are, um, for example, going to long-term care facilities, it is better for them if they don't have MRSA that goes with them. The problem is it's very hard to get rid of it in those patients who are generally unwell. And what we um, have found is that sometimes the plans to get rid of the bug actually just make it more resistant. So we have to be very careful. There are um, a few old drugs that work for MRSA. So some of the strains are sensitive to an antibiotic called clindamycin, which is an oral antibiotic that's been around a long time. More and more we see resistance to that one. Then other oral agents would be something called Ceftra or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Um, or doxycycline. So we use those oral agents um, and those patients with life-threatening infection, vancomycin becomes our first-line drug. And vancomycin, um, if the dosing is too low, the bug becomes resistant. So we see vancomycin intermediate staphylococcus aureus or vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus, which fortunately we have not seen in Canada. Um, so vancomycin is a bit tricky. You want to give them enough drug to kill the bug, but not so much that you damage their kidneys. Um, the drug that has really um, replaced vancomycin for a lot of staph aureus bacteremia or MRSA is um, daptomycin. And again, that drug requires some monitoring, but it's less toxic. And um, there are new drugs coming along like septobioprol, which we don't have easy access to. Yeah, so I did a uh, meta-analysis looking at decolonization for MRSA and uh, the interesting thing was that the um, decolonization appears to be least effective in the patients we need it most in. So those patients that are clinically unwell, elderly, lots of comorbidities are more likely to develop resistant organism and less likely to be decolonized, whereas patients who are young and healthy and can get out of hospital and stay out of hospital are more likely to be effectively decolonized. Um, since I did that uh, review, there have been a number of studies looking at effective decolonization strategies. And there are some strategies that appear to be effective using a systemic antibiotic combined with um, chlorhexidine body wash and topical um, antibacterials in the nose to get rid of the Staph aureus. And we are using those under um, just specific um, clinical indications. Those patients that have recurrent infections, we may try decolonization, but we're more likely to do that in those patients that are otherwise healthy because of this, the data we got from my previous study which showed that you're more likely to generate resistance if they're not otherwise healthy. Well, I think everybody has a, um, an opportunity to help fight resistance and the, the way you do that is to not ask for antibiotics when you don't need them. So uh, it's very hard as a physician to not give a patient antibiotics when they really are demanding it and I know a lot of my colleagues and myself at times, we just we give in to the pressure and so um, patients can help by not putting that, applying that pressure. Viral diseases don't get better with antibiotics and we need to stop treating them.